about here? I'm going to give you a case number right now. Okay. So if you have to call back 911 at any time, that this case number is going with this call. And the case number is 15. 15. 084. 084. 594. 594. Okay. So. Yep. Hello. Hi, is this Siri? This is. Yes. I just got off the phone with my sergeant, and he is actually in morning meeting. We have morning meeting at 8.30, and some of the command staff is there. So he is going to throw it out to the command staff as to what we need to do next to make sure that it's handled appropriately. So I just need my sergeant to call me back after he talks to them, and then I will give you a call back. Okay. Well, I might not be around by then. And I really seriously doubt that anything is going to happen because uh, I've been investigating the Duluth Police Department for you know quite a few years, and there's a rigged trial for Officer Jopi. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Okay, so can we just okay? So this this conversation right here is just about some issues that you're having with the school board, correct? Oh, well, it's a criminal act, yes. Okay, so but it has to do with the school board, and like I said to you before. Call my supervisor to figure out what it is that I need to do, what avenue I need to go down. So that's what I did. I just called and I spoke to Sergeant Mickus, and he is at morning meeting, which occurs every morning at 8:30. Yes, I, so I understand as as, that. As soon as he gets an opportunity to talk at morning meeting, there's command staff there as well. He's going to throw that out to command staff. What is going on with this call? And then give me a call back to direct me as to what to do. Yes, I I, fo I followed that the very first time you said that. I was just okay. I was just putting things into context because I've asked for free electronic information from your chief Gordon Ramsey about the apparently a malicious uh, complaint filed against Art Perry, Johnston Perry, and the I'm false gonna, arrest I'm against not gonna deal Lauren with that Martell. I'm not going to deal with this issue. So if you're not home, how what should I do? Leave you a message? Yes, that would be appropriate. Okay. So if you're not home by the time I get done speaking to my sergeant then I will just leave you a message on your voicemail. Yes, and I have your phone number. What's your phone number? Well, this is a squad cell phone, and it's not my traditional squad, so okay, well, my squad was just crashed. So I don't know what the squad cell phone number is for the squad. It's uh, squad 79. Squad 79. Do you have a regular uh, office phone number I could contact you at then? ID yes. would be to, to try and call that today because my cell, my, the phone number that I have for my voicemail, I check every morning when I come into work, okay. but my office is actually my squad car. I spend all day in the squad car till I'm done with my shift, so I wouldn't get your message until tomorrow morning, most likely. Well, say I don't get a chance to call you till tomorrow morning and you're in a different squad, how would I contact you? Then you can call 911 and they will reopen up your call and I will give you a case number. Okay, well, so in other words, when you call me back, you're going to leave a case number on my voicemail if I'm not here. I'm going to give you a case number right now. Okay. So if you have to call back 911 at any time, that this case number is going with this call, and the case number is 15. 15. 084. 084. 594. 594. Okay, so, yep. but I have to call 911, isn't that, uh, I mean, couldn't I just call a regular number and have me transferred, you know, so I don't tie up a 911 line? Okay, so, like I said before, I'm in a squad that today, because my squad is not working, so I don't know the squad cell phone number. You can try calling that squad cell phone, but multiple officers have access to that cell phone. Okay. So the best thing to do would be to call the non-emergency line. Okay. And and then tell them, you know what, I have a case number, this is my case number, could you please reopen it and re-dispatch me to the officer that was helping me. We have a ton of calls for service, and sometimes it's just not always easy for us to step aside, especially on patrol, to try and call somebody back, so it makes it easier if dispatch lets us know that, hey, your call is reopened, could you take a look at it, and somebody is waiting for a phone call so that they can interrupt us in the middle of anything that we're doing, like, let's say I'm out on foot patrol or something, then they can alert me that this is what's going on. That, that's fine. I just didn't want, I didn't feel comfortable calling 911 for this situation. Yep, nope, you don't need to call 
call 911, the actual digits, but just the 911 non-emergency line. Okay. Would well, be appropriate. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure out there, so. Yep. Okay. Well, right, then. Have a, have a good day, Terry. Yeah, you too. Bye now. Thanks. in which the school board did not vote to waive the attorney-client privilege. Secondly, Mr. Welty has been advised on several occasions of the importance of data privacy. The above described conduct demonstrates that Mr. Welty abdicated his responsibilities as a member of the school board in favor of his personal interest. Okay, then you would move that. Second. Seconded by Member Welty. The motion for the adoption of the foregoing resolution was duly seconded by Member Welty and upon a roll call. Uh, we will have a vote, but first we are going to have a uh, discussion. Thank you. Uh, it's been moved and seconded for the motion. Member Johnston. I see what's going on here again. I see our attorneys in the up there making it as twenty-five or three thousand uh, dollars for this trip up here. I also understand that he was the one that recommended that we throw in the, the racist comment for me and the charges against me. That, that's I think out of that, order. Uh, let's just that, stick with uh, the let's just stick with the resolution. Well, since this attorney has also drafted this one, I think he's suspecting <laughs> that when he's making. Twenty-five to three thousand dollars. You know, it's pretty disgusting. I think people in this community should know how much money we're paying attorneys. We paid him, I believe, sixty thousand dollars this year. At least two twenty thousand dollars went against me. Who knows how much this is going to be after that? So I think the public should know that the attorney that's representing this uh, district has a is is actually an ambulance chaser. He's going everything okay, he can, throwing not, things like racist comments. Please, please do not resort. Uh, uh, do you have to uh, finish up? Uh, yes, I do. I'm going to uh, make a motion to delete and substitute this amendment. No, uh, yes, I am. Motion, you can, you can, you can, I'm making you a motion to delete, delete and substitute. Okay. Uh, okay, this is the resolution that I'm substituting. One, resolution investigation of the district lack of compliance with Government Data Practices Act. Whereas on February 26, 2013, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709, St. Louis County, concerning increases in cost of the long-run facility plan, soft costs of the long-run facility plan, the soft costs, change orders, energy and sustainability designs, and compliance with that. This request has only been partially, almost not at all, complied with. Whereas on April 24, 2014, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709, concerning change orders between ISD 709 and Johnson Controls Incorporated. Whereas on August 11, 2014, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709, St. Louis County requesting all emails, documents, memos, notes, call logs, and meetings involving any school board member, any attorneys, the superintendent and his cabinet containing Art Johnston or Jane Bushy from September 5, 2013 to the present. Whereas August 18, 2014, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709, requesting all communication between ISD 709, Attorney Kevin Rupp, Flinsky, Mark, and Johnson, and any contacts with the firm Flinsky, Mark, and Johnson, containing to the investigation looking into the allegation concerning Member Art Johnston, and the fact that ISD has not responded to that request. Whereas on August 18, 2014, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709, uh, requesting all communications, including emails, memos, documents, notes, call logs, and meetings between Independent School District 709, superintendent, or his cabinet, including a staff, a staff, including Lincoln Park Middle School administration, and any school board members concerning elimination of community outreach program, and the fact that ISD has not responded to that request. Whereas on September 2, 2014, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709 requesting all communication between its employees, elected officials, agents of Independent School District 709 on one hand, the officers, employees, agents of Johnson Controls on the other hand, concerning the subject matter of change orders entered into between ISC 709 and Johnson Controls dated January 13, 2012 and November 30, 2009 and the fact that ISD has not responded to that request. 
Therefore, be it resolved, the school board hereby authorizes their investigation into why these Government Data Practices Act have not been complied with, with the investigation to be conducted by the law firm Dryle, Swarlarski, Knudsen, and Parmerville, L.T. It's been seconded by uh, Member Welty. All in favor say aye. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, this requires discussion. Okay, discussion. Um, Blocker Kemp, did you want to discuss this or? Yeah, no, I'm not this. Okay, we'll stick to the amendment. Um, Member Sligapunko, did you want, didn't want to no, hit I your button? To okay. the we'll go to that. And Member. Johnston. Sure, the reason I'm doing this is that I think that it's important that the public know, uh, and also other school board members that pretend they don't know, that this school administration, the superintendent, staff of this administration, including the school board, have repeatedly, repeatedly violated the Minnesota Government Data Practices Act with no impunity whatsoever, without even responding. I think I listed uh, six of these. I had one, uh, one, uh, one brief thing. I got one paragraph back on the other one. Uh, other one said, "Oh, we'll respond here any time." Has been uh, three months. Other one has been uh, over a year. And I think that to have this board go forward uh, with such outlandish actions against a, a board member when they themselves repeatedly, repeatedly violate the Minnesota Government Data Practices Act is really unconscionable. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking people to vote for this. If they want to have this district comply with Government Data Practices Act, uh, that we should vote in favor of this amendment to finally make things right in this district. Member Welty? I find this a very surprising and interesting amendment. I do not predict that it will pass, but it has to do with the subject of the first resolution, which is information, what should be made available to the public. Uh, the original resolution uh, calls for the censure of me for releasing information, and I'll have comments to make should this uh, amendment fail. But I do think that Member Johnston has made a very good point. This school district, administration, school board, has lived and died by the withholding of information on the assumption that any bad information whatsoever is, is looking backwards. And I have been aware of many requests by Art Johnston over the course of four years and before him, two years' worth of Gary Glass's uh, requests, and they have been routinely denied. And when people are routinely denied access to what should be public information, for instance, where $84 million of public spending went on soft costs, it leads to suspicions. And this is a school district It is desperately in need of building trust with the public. And I have sympathized with Art Johnson, even when I was not terribly happy with him a few years ago, uh, because he has constantly asked for information, such as these most recent examples, which should be made available public, made, made available to him at some reasonable way, perhaps, perhaps with some charges, but he has constantly been denied. And yet I have been called on the carpet because I have I think quite reasonably been found guilty or will soon be found guilty, I'll find myself guilty of releasing information that I know I should not have, have, have released. In fact, I intend to vote for the censure motion, although there are some points of it I would like to ask about. But I do think Member Johnson is, and I will reiterate, completely right in making a point that when the school board acts in a capricious fashion, and only releases that data which it wants to and actively encourages the administration to withhold other public data from a minority, it is not acting in the best interests of our community, our schools, or our children. Member Johnson? Sure, I'd just like to add to that, Mr. Wolfe. You reminded me of a 
issue that we got that was written by our uh, attorney Rob for the Senate all by uh, Bill Hansen to us on the cover letter of this 67-page uh, report about me. I said, anybody violating this such Data Practice Act request of the Minnesota Government Data Practice Act is liable for a $15,000 fine. Of course, I've been waiting to have the superintendent be given a, a fining himself $15,000 and also remember here two months ago when our human resource director violated Data Practice Act talking about my marital status and an employee's marital status. I've been expecting to get $15,000 or $30,000 a school shouldn't be having now, so I'm certainly looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, I'm saying that somewhat facetiously because knowing this board and the superintendent, this administration, that certainly probably won't happen. But it should be happening. So instead, this board is going after member Wealthy uh, for a censorship thing. He's already admitted publicly that maybe that wasn't such a good thing to, to say. But I think that uh, here we have blatant things where our own, our own uh, financial director says that uh, that people, uh, the two people that I mentioned, not Mr. Wealthy, should be given fifteen thousand dollar fines, and nothing is happening whatsoever. It's been very surprising that nothing happens. But yet I, I uh, hear on Saturday morning that hey, we're going to have a suddenly a, a meeting on Monday. That this, I think it was, I think it was done in the just of Christmas spirit. So that was that was really nice. Uh, I think that. Um, I would also like to make, again, uh, on this one, I think that uh, here if we have an investigation into the superintendent, I think that is long, long overdue, and I think this would get us back on the right track as a board to have transparency, and moving forward, finally, to have some accountability and transparency that these people in this community are really getting a little bit tired of going after the superintendent and five or is it three board members going after other ones. I think it's really unconsciousable and uh, it would be a good uh, statement finally to make it to the public that yes, we're going to finally do something right and, uh, and uh, have an investigation into the superintendent. Emmer Welty? Uh, thank you, Member Johnston. I guess I would make this comment. If it is true, and I suspect it is, that the uh, Director of Human Relations and the Superintendent have released uh, data private information, then I am in very good company indeed. All in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. All opposed say aye. No. Let's do this one more time. There's a motion to amend. All in favor of amending the motion or of, of the amended motion signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, no. 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 That fails five to two to five. Okay, we'll vote.